नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम वी विल कंटिन्यू आवर स्टडी ऑफ डायमेंशन थ्रू Gilbert Samuel polynomials. So last time I stated a theorem, and we have to we have not started the proof of that yet. So today we will finish the proof and continue the study. So let me recall from the last time that we have a graded ring R. That means it is like this. It's a decomposition into subgroups. this is n graded and with the condition that rn times rm is contained in rn plus m for all n and m uh, in particular r not the subring and all these subgroups rms are r not modules uh, and we are going to assume further that this r is a noetherian ring r is noetherian uh, that means all ideals in this ring are finitely generated or equivalently uh, arbitrary family of ideals have a, a maximal element uh, and this one is um, equivalent to this is equivalent to saying that r not is noetherian and this ideal So this R plus, if you take all non-zero direct summands, R M, M is positive. This is clearly an ideal. This is an ideal in this. If this ideal is finitely generated, and R not is noetherian. then already that's equivalent to saying r is not zero this is not so difficult uh, this is because uh, if this ideal is so this way is obvious this way is clear and for this way r not is not zero given and this ideal is finitely generated this is a homogeneous ideal it's clear this is a homogeneous and it is finitely generated so finitely many homogeneous elements will generate that so if you take those homogeneous elements so uh, r not r plus is generated by homogeneous elements say uh, small x1 to xr this small x1 to xr are homogeneous and of positive degrees then the map from the polynomial ring r0 x1 to xr to r r is generated as an algebra by this x1 to xr over r0 so there is a natural subjective map from here to here and because this is noetherian this is noetherian by hilbert basis theorem so by hilbert basis r is noetherian that is usually the basic assumption we will make always all right so uh, then we consider the modules over this ring which are 
graded modules so m is a graded module so m is a, has a decomposition into abelian groups like this and now you allow some negative integers also this is r module and graded means means this rn times rm is contained in mn plus f so also this each these homo, these are called homogeneous components of degree m and they are r not modules all mms are r not modules and now also we make the standard assumption that m is finitely generated r module which is equivalent to each mi each mn mm mm is finitely generated R not module for all m and for large negative they are zero. M m is zero for all m large negative. That is the symbol for sufficiently large negative. This is also very easy to see because. Um, so first of all uh, this way is clear and this way if m is finitely generated then then uh, if you shift if you look at m uh, less equal to or bigger equal to m this is direct sum after m m m m n m n n bigger equal to m if m is finitely generated then all these are the sub modules therefore they are finitely generated and their successive quotient m m is m bigger equal to m plus 1 modulo m bigger equal to m because when i go mod one shift you will get the homogeneous compound of degree m so this is r is r is no ethereum so these quotients are uh, finitely generated that means mms are finitely generated and so each mms are finitely generated so unless this m is m, m is if it is not zero for large negative integer then you can produce a chain um, ascending chain which will, will not have a, which will not become stationary so therefore all mms are zero for large negative m so these are the usual standard assumptions one makes and the standard example one considers is the polynomial ring over a field kx1 to xn and these are the standard grading standard grading that simply means to each variable you give a grading to degree of variable xi is 1 for all i this is called a standard grading with this the homogeneous components are precisely the hom uh, generated by homogeneous polynomials of that fixed degree so those are the homogeneous components uh, and the more examples you can create from the standard graded ring by going modulo the homogeneous ideals so there we have enough number of examples for uh, graded rings and so on in fact 
uh, what I will do after I finish this uh, module, I want to study in general dimension of Noetherian ring by using graded by reducing their study to the graded rings that is and then use this theory for that. So, to each graded module to each graded module m we have attached a series that is we called it a Poincare series. Pm. And how is this, this defined? Pm is Pm is defined as this is a series power series. So this is actually the uh, power series. It is a power series with coefficients in z in the variable z and a polynomial in z inverse in that. So, that is dimension look at the the graded components here homogeneous components m m some of them could have negative homogeneous component. So, this is this sum dimension of ah, here I was also assume uh, at least for a while I will assume that R naught is so R is our graded ring it looks like this and R naught is actually finite k algebra where k is a field k is a field So, just for the sake of understanding take R naught equal to k because the general case finite k algebra I, I want to soon even do it even more general than that. Uh, so called I want to assume that R naught is a Artinian ring I will I will uh, recall about Artinian rings just before I uh, start the general case. So, for a field if R naught is a field then these all these mm's are k vector spaces. So, take their dimensions. So, this is some integer and take this is a coefficient of z power m. So, it is a power series in z with, with integer coefficient, but remember this power series has some negative terms. So, therefore, and they are only finitely many because of our assumption that m is finitely generated. So, therefore, it is it is a Laurent polynomial in z with, with coefficients in the power series ok. And what did we see last time we saw how does one compute for example, when I have a twist twisting means shifting the grading. So, for each integer m I have defined m, m minus m this is a new graded uh, graded module such that the grading is shifted by uh, this at n equal to m m plus n. This is a new this is a grading module only shifting only you have renumbered the components by the shifting and then we saw uh, if you take the um, the uh, compare the Poincare series for m and Poincare series for the shifted graded module, then how does it behave you we saw this is equal to this is equal to z power m. In general we could write for k actually that is better m k for any integer k this is just shifting by k. So, how do you compute also we saw when you go mod homogeneous element then how do you compute the Poincare series ok. And then with all these things uh, we have stated a theorem and we want to prove that theorem. So, what is the theorem ok. So, we know now that our R is 
over R naught is generated by finitely many homogeneous elements. So, that is x1 to xr and x1 to xr each xi homogeneous and let us call the degree to be gamma i's, i's from 1 to r. They are non negative integers, positive integers actually. So, gamma i's are natural numbers, positive natural numbers. When all the gamma is are 1, then we are in a standard case. And we will see some examples where allowing gamma not all gamma is are not necessary 1 that also has help in calculation of some Gilbert series or some dimensions or some, some more invariants. So, in this case, so R is this okay, and M, M is graded. R module. What other assumptions we have? Okay, then the theorem says how this theorem will tell how to calculate the Poincare series R and M as above. The Poincare series PM of M is a rational function. Of the type of type. See when I say a rational function, you see it's already we know it's a polynomial over z a power series in z and finitely many negative terms. So it's a it's a rash, it's not really a rational function by definition, but this this part says that it is a rational function and are, and of a particular type. So what type? So PM equal to Q divided by 1 minus z power gamma 1, 1 minus z power gamma n. Let us call this as n. So, Q where, where Q is a Laurent polynomial with integer coefficients. You will see the proof is really simple. So, first, uh, so it is a rational function because Q is also a rational function, it has, an, uh, it has only finitely many negative terms. So, it is really a rational function. So, it is it's really a rational function with integer coefficients. So, proof we will prove this statement by induction on n. Remember the n is the uh, number of R naught algebra generators of R. Right? As a, as a R naught algebra, R is generated by this x1 to xn. x1 to xn are homogeneous of degree gamma 1 to gamma n and this n we are going to induct on. So, uh, induction starting should be at 0. So, n equal to 0 what happens? That means, R is R naught and then all uh, uh, all M, MMs are finitely generated R naught modules and uh, and M is M is finite R module therefore, finite R naught module therefore, really only finitely many components of M are non-zero because it is a finitely generated R naught module. So, uh, so in this case M is finite R naught module. Just remember that when I say module is finite that means it is a finitely generated module. It is a finite R naught module 
and in particular so okay uh, let we are assuming r is equal to k so it's a finite k module means it's a finite dimensional k vector space so dimension k m is finite and in this case actually um, pm is actually a laurent polynomial in in z z plus minus 1 yes r not equal to k but i want to the next step i will do is r not is actually finite k algebra finite means right now i am i am i am assuming only r not is k that is because i am not really sure whether you know modules of finite length have, do you have you got uh, exposure to modules of finite length so i uh, that's why i'm keeping it pending in general case so that i will after this we will i will recall some basics about modules of finite length and then we will come back to this so in this case r not uh, p uh, poincare series is really a laurent polynomial because after a while all mm's are zero and only finitely many negative terms are there therefore this is really a poincare series so and that matches with this because what what we wanted to prove is the poincare series is a laurent polynomial divided by this particular uh, polynomial and all in this case all gammas are not there see the, this part is not there because n is zero so this proves the theorem in case when n is zero so now assume n is bigger equal to 1 okay and now look at this xn xn is of degree gamma n so m if i shift m by gamma n to the negative side so gamma n to m and take a multiplication map by xn and why did i shift it i shifted it because i wanted this to be homogeneous of degree 0 this should be a graded homomorphism that is the reason i shifted this by the degree of xn so this multiplication map has a kernel and co kernel so look at kernel let us call n to be the kernel and uh, p to be the co kernel so we will get an exact sequence like that remember co kernel means this module by image so that this becomes exact sequence exact sequence you know and that means that each stage it is exact so this is an exact sequence and uh, last time we recalled that whenever we have a exact sequence of homogeneous graded modules uh, uh, graded modules with homogeneous homomorphisms then the alternating sum of the poincare series will be zero so in this case what will we get so first of all pn 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 will look like now this this n and p note that n and p are not only r modules but r by x1 module see r is a graded ring original graded ring this is x1 not x1 xn xn is a homogeneous element of degree n so this generates a homogeneous ideal so modulo that it is a graded ring again so this graded ring now as a r not modulo it is generated by one less element namely xn so this is generated as an algebra over r not by x1 to xn minus 1 and this n and p both are annihilated by xn xn times n is 0 and also xn times p is 0 so because they are annihilated by xn both of them can be thought as a r by 
ideal genetic by xn module and which now we have now cut down the number of r0 algebra generators so by induction hypothesis the poincare series of n and poincare series of p are of the required form so pn and pq how do they look like pn and pp this will look like some lorentz polynomial so i will denote it by qn because it will depend on n divided by this 1 minus z power gamma 1 1 minus z power gamma n minus 1 and similarly this pp will also be some lorentz polynomial qp divided by 1 minus z gamma 1 1 minus z gamma n minus 1 so we should write where this q n and q p are lorentz polynomials with integer coefficients this is the induction hypothesis and now because of the short the, this exact sequence above we will take the alternating sum is 0. So, let us write the, the, the sequence for that. So, what do we get? We get uh, starting with n that is p n p n the next will be this twisted this uh, shifted m by gamma minus gamma n and that we know what is the Poincare series for this. So, that is and with with a negative sign minus z power gamma n p m. The next is m. So, that is p m with a plus sign. The next is the minus sign and p p and this is 0. Now, in this in this equation we know what is p p we know what is p n by induction and we want to know what is p m but that is very easy now because from this we get p m uh, p m times 1 minus z power gamma n times p n this i want to keep one side the other side shifted that is this goes p p minus p n and this is now uh, q m q m will look like the Laurent polynomials from the numerators from each one of them. So, that is q p minus q n and divided by 1 minus z gamma 1 1 minus z gamma n minus 1 and just shift this to the denominator down and you get so q m is the difference of these two Laurent polynomials. So, it is also Laurent polynomial and we get what we want. So, this this proves the theorem. Now, before I go on, uh, I want to spend some time to release this assumption that R0 is a field and therefore, I will need um, more, uh, I will need a concept of modules of finite length. So, what I want to say that uh, if I, if you have a module of finite length means length of a module should make sense and this length concept should be more general than the dimension concept. So, uh, over a finite k algebra uh, the finitely generated modules will be of finite length and therefore, all these things should make sense. So, again I will recapitulate after we uh, recall this concept of uh, modules of finite length. 